this week I'm gonna be doing five breakfasts, five lunches, and five dinners. I've been meal prepping. Most of these items are gonna be pretty low carb, or if not low carb, it's gonna be like more healthier carbs, like uh, fruit, whole grains, and so forth. I've been eating like this for a little over a week and just doing 30 to 45 minutes worth of exercise each day. And I went from 216 to 212. So um, of course those first few pounds can be water weight. Some of it can be fat, help get rid of bloating. But of course we gotta get rid of that so we start to get down to the nitty gritty. But I will say the more I've been working out and the more I've been eating that way, I've been feeling better. My gut health has been better. I've been going to the bathroom every day and my tummy hasn't been as bloated. So if you want just some inspiration for some low carb ideas and meal prep ideas and healthier food option ideas, then stay tuned. So these are the fruit that I'm gonna be working with. <laughs> I'm gonna cut up some bananas cause we're gonna make some smoothie bags. Uh, this is actually canned pineapples, but if you have frozen or fresh, that's even better. Um, I got blueberries and some mango chunks. First, let's cut these bananas. Okay, that took all of like two seconds. So now it's time to assemble. We're gonna, I'm gonna do a mixture between bananas, pineapples, blueberries, mango. Some smoothies will have all of it. Some will have a different combination. Okay, so I put these on a pink towel because my countertop is kind of dark and since the bags are clear, I want you to be able to see what was in each. This smoothie bag is mangoes and blueberry and I filled all of them up about halfway like I said. It's mango and blueberry. This one is banana, blueberry, mango, and pineapple. It has all four. I only did one with all four fruit. This one is a blueberry banana smoothie. This one is a pineapple and mango smoothie. And this one is banana and pineapple. That one's gonna be really, really sweet. So um, those are my five smoothie bags. Now let's get our protein done. So I'm about to make some turkey bacon on the Foreman grill and uh, let that cook. And I think some of them I'm gonna do just bacon and then some of them I'm gonna maybe do just eggs. Okay, so this is the first five. I almost burnt them up, but I'm finna get ready to pull them up now. Ta-da! And it's done. Alright, I am about to prep my egg proteins. Alright, I got, I have six eggs going. I'm gonna scramble them and add some spices. And I'm gonna try to do a soft scramble and then I'm just gonna put it into my container. That way when it goes into the microwave, I'm not eating hard, tasteless eggs. Okay, normally my eggs look way better than this, but um, they were kind of browning at the bottom a little bit because I was trying to talk about it. But uh, we're going to go ahead and put this in the container. Okay, so these are my five breakfasts. I did my eggs and I put a little bit of mozzarella cheese on them and some parsley. And then I have three bacons. So it's three eggs in each container, three slices of bacon in each container. It's pure protein, low carbs. Um, for the eggs, about four net carbs, three to four net carbs, depending on the size of egg you use. And for the turkey bacon, if I'm not mistaken, it's one carb per bacon, one net carb. So that's three net carbs per bag of turkey bacon, which makes all of this keto compliant. And as far as your smoothies, um, none of my smoothies are necessarily keto compliant, but I would pair one smoothie per protein. But um, to make it keto, you can use your berry options, which would be uh, raspberry, blueberries, blackberries, and take, um, portion it out, read the back. A lot of times it'll tell you that serving size is one fourth. But what you're gonna have to do is measure out the amount of carbs that you wanna have for your berries. So if the blueberry says one fourth is six, uh, net carbs it's just an example then you want to do either you can do the whole fourth which will give you six net carbs and then add your um sour cream uh heavy whipping cream to it to make it a smoothie and maybe some swerves uh sweetener or monk fruit sweetener and vanilla 
or you could measure out let's say one strawberry um a fourth of a fourth right like maybe a tablespoon or two tablespoons worth of blueberries and a cucumber like you can really mix up different fruits and veggies to uh, make it less net carbs and more filling and add your kale and spinach or whatever you're going to do and like i said you want a little sweetness on your smoothie a spoonful of monk fruit sweetener your heavy whipping cream or whatever dairy or non-dairy uh milk based products you want to use and voila you have a keto smoothie so i'll do a separate video on low carb super low carb smoothies but these are my breakfasts next i have some cajun style sausage you can use andouille sausage regular sausage or whatever but i cut it up a while back and froze it so it's thawed out okay i put a little oil in my pan now you want to add your sausage and let your pan heat up or you can let your oil heat up and then add the sausage i just put it all in there together and i'm gonna let it start frying these are my veggies and as you know these are low carb broccoli cuts and cauliflower the cuts are going to have more stems i normally use florets but you know grocery high and these were on sale for like 77 cents my other ingredient that i'm using is um the thin spaghetti um you can use a healthier pasta like um a chickpea pasta uh, veggie spirals if you want to make it keto friendly use um the squash spiral squash like the zucchini and you know like authentically veggie pastas or you can leave this out and cut up some onions and bell peppers so you have like broccoli cauliflower onions and bell peppers broccoli cauliflower zucchini pasta um broccoli cauliflower regular pasta protein pasta uh, or um, the healthier pastas if you know of a low carb pasta or whatever your pasta substitute is would be just fine. I used a handful and, and broke them in half so you gotta think this is gonna go maybe two or three meals worth of pasta. Okay so I added the entire uh, Great Value Brown bag of um, cauliflower and half of the broccoli i did not drain the oils off of my meat i'm going to use those to help uh cook my veggies and i'm going to add a little bit of water to this to allow it to um steam and you can also add water to your sausage while it's cooking and just let it cook until it starts to fry again so all the water evaporated but i'm gonna cover the bottom with water and let this steam this is how much water I added. Um, that might be a little much because broccoli and cauliflower are both water vegetables and create their own water. But just do it as you would do your broccoli and cauliflower normal. If you add too much water, once it's done, you can always drain it. Okay, I drained most of the water off of mine. It really didn't take nothing but like five to eight minutes to get the broccoli and cauliflower thawed. I'm going to leave mine kind of tough. I don't want it mushy because you got to remember we're prepping. So these meals are going to go back into the microwave or stove side. However you decide to warm up your meals. Next, I added my drained pasta. Remember, uh, whatever type of pasta you decide to use, cook it accordingly um, to the according to the direction. Um, I would say if you're doing like the zucchini and squash pastas, just put those in the microwave and then add them. You don't have to cook them, cook them. You know, especially if they're in a microwave safe uh, frozen bag. Okay, so far everything is smelling so good. If you want it to be like mine, I use a, a tablespoon or two of soy sauce. Um, two teaspoons of curry powder, a teaspoon of parsley, a teaspoon of garlic powder, um, two teaspoons of the salt free seasoning. If you got Mrs. Dash or any other kind of salt free seasoning, or you can skip that, then you, you know, or use your own uh, mixture of herbs. And I use about two teaspoons of salt. These are my spices on top, and y'all, like, I'm I love curry powder. 
but the curry powder and soy sauce mixed together it smells phenomenal and so this is kind of like I wasn't going for that but it's kind of like a um a beef lo mein or beef and broccoli so this is the meal and it made three it made three containers and I just put some paprika on top for a garnish just to add a little color to it like I said if you did like red bell peppers that'd be a nice color or if you like spice and you want to do some um uh, the crushed red pepper flakes or cayenne pepper powder for my next two meals I baked off some potatoes uh, to help with my kids meal prep we hadn't used them so I'm going to use them to make my lunches and I'm going to do some stuffed potatoes I'm debating in my brain am I going to do like a stuffed chili potato or broccoli but I'm leaning towards a broccoli and cheese potato because this is the chili I have, uh, the chili with no beans, which is fine. When I looked at the carbs in it, it's uh, 17 minus 3 in fiber, which is uh, 14 net carbs per serving. And it's only two servings in this can. And let's see, if you look at the protein, the protein is crazy high. So it's 21 grams of protein. So I may do the chili cheese potato with broccoli i don't know we're gonna figure it out we're gonna see so i'm gonna do something called blossoming the potato and y'all i'm holding my recording device with one hand so <laughs> you're gonna take a knife and you're gonna split it and of course this is to be done with two hands and if you took both hands on each side you will open it up and blossom it so let me blossom it but your hands, see how my hands position? You're gonna do that with two different hands. So now these are cold potatoes. If you do this with a warm potato, it's gonna look really pretty like the potatoes at Wendy's, which is where I learned it. I worked there when I was 18 for like three years. I'm gonna put them in this type of container. And now that it's open or blossom, if your potato cold, it's probably gonna look like mine. If it's hot because mine been in the refrigerator for like two days but if it's hot it's gonna look much prettier we're gonna open it up what i'm gonna do is assemble it cold right when i warm it up in the microwave at work it's gonna look beautiful the cheese butter everything's gonna be melted but i'm gonna do this cold um now and put the lids on them and then i can warm them and eat them at work okay now i have both potatoes open I have some sour cream here. I got two slices of this type of cheese. This type of cheese. Um, I, I was debating using my shredded cheese. Again, we are definitely meal prepping on a budget. So I spent about $60 or $70 this week on grocery. All of my girls are meal prep for the week. And I'm meal prepping now. And that's probably depleted the refrigerator. But it's good because we cook because we got all our meals ready, right? And a few snacks in the cabinets and stuff for in between. I'm going to cut uh, two little squares of butter and I'm going to put those in the bottom. I got my broccoli warming up. I don't want to get it overdone. Just hot enough that it's a tad bit softened. So when I put it in the microwave, I'm not eating a tough uh, broccoli and cheese stuffed potato. You can also add chicken. You can add bacon bits or bacon. You know, slice it in however you want to put it in there whatever type of meat or protein you want to add to this you can do the chili and cheese you can do chili with broccoli and cheese however so be wild you know have fun with your uh, potato i'm probably going to put my sour cream into sandwich bags and place them on the side so that when i heat this up i can take my sour cream out and i don't have to be eating hot sour cream Okay, so this is what my sour cream bag look like. And I try to let as much air out of it as possible. I'm going to fold it in half. And my potatoes are cold, you all. So I'm putting this in here with my potato. But if your potato is warm and you want to keep it separate, you can. If you have those little small round sauce uh, containers, you can use those also. Uh, with this, you can either open it up and get it out. Or you can just cut. You see the corner? 
cut a little hole here and squeeze it out like you would um, a sour cream pouch. Okay, and, and now we have our five lunches. Our three kind of like a sausage lo mein, and you can use beef or beef sausage or chicken or shrimp, just whatever you prefer to use for your meat choice. Um, I use sausage today and our stuffed potatoes and this will look even prettier with the shredded cheese on top but you can also use cube cheese or like I did I just used pasteurized American cheese on top once it melts it's gonna be really pretty but these are our five lunches for this week okay so now now I am uh Cook in some ground turkey. You can use ground beef, ground chicken, or ground pork, or tofu, whatever your um, protein is, or you don't have to ground it. I mean, you don't have to <laughs> cook the ground meat, and you can just use whatever veggie options I'm going to use. I'm making up these recipes as I go, y'all. I think it's one of the great parts of meal prepping when something smells delicious. And you know that things you put in there are good. Your, your body's just so excited to see what you made for you. Okay, as you can see, my ground turkey is starting to look more like ground beef. I'll let you know some of the things that I put in it. And it's also cooking like ground beef. Um, with the I put oil in the bottom of the pan. You can use vegetable oil. Um, olive oil is definitely my healthy go-to. Coconut oil. Um, you know, just whatever oil you prefer, even fats from other meats, like let's say you got some bacon grease left over, or you save all your different uh, meat fats, like the older people do, and put it in a can, just use whatever fat you want to fry your meat in. But of course, you got to add a little fat to the turkey, or either you're going to have to boil it until it's done, because it doesn't create its own fat. Okay, these are the spices that we're going that I use in my turkey. You can do it to taste, but if you want to do it just like mine, this is what I use: um, a teaspoon of garlic powder. Um, I use the rest of the time that I had, but I'm sure it's about a teaspoon or two worth. Um, Memphis barbecue, one tablespoon or less, maybe like a half a tablespoon. It wasn't much in here. I just used the rest. Um, two to three dashes of liquid smoke to give it like a smoky barbecue flavor um, about a tablespoon of minced onions and a teaspoon of onion powder and then I used half a patch of this beef um, powder it's kind of like the bouillon cubes so if you have bouillon cubes one to two of those in beef flavor again if you're a vegetarian or you don't eat uh, any type of beef whatsoever you can substitute that um, for our non-beef eaters with a chicken bouillon if that's the flavor you want to go for or you can just use these spices they work perfectly or you can create your own spice combination to uh, make your ground meat or ground veggie meat how you would like it now that our meat is done and our spices and everything I am boiling some brown rice if you want to make this dish keto compliant you can use uh, cauliflower rice or no rice at all okay so my brown rice is done and as you can see it was just a little bit like probably not even half a cup and over here I got um, I've got my turkey ground turkey meat crunk up crank up again y'all have to excuse my southern ebanks cranked up again and I added um, a seasoned blend, which is onions, uh, bell pepper, red and green, and celery. This is the seasoned blend bag. I used half a bag of it. I also added uh, some sweet corn. You can add mixed vegetables, peas and carrots, um, just peas, uh, frozen green beans, whatever veg of your choice it is. Okay, I've added um, my corn and my onions and stuff, and I went ahead and added uh, about two tablespoons of navy beans. And this is what it's looking like, and I'm about to add uh, my rice. Okay, 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 and this is the finished product. 
you can see um the rice and veggies i did some salsa because it was definitely giving me like mexican vibe food and some sour cream on each one and those are three dinners very high protein it's like more protein in this dish than anything just a little bit of rice uh some veggies a little bit of corn as a starch and with the beans and the meat very big protein pack and i add a salsa just to add another vegetable element and some sour cream okay we have made it to the last of our meal and this is our last dinner meal i'm going to cook these beans i put a uh, garlic powder minced onions and a little bit of salt in there and i'm going to add some pepper and a little bit of water and just let those boil and get hot okay here i got some white rice going this time instead of brown rice because that's what i had i did enough for about two uh, plates we're going to turn this into some stir fry rice so we're going to add um some corn uh maybe some more of those onions and bell peppers because those are just the vegetables i have to work with right now and we're going to add um some stir fry mixed to the rice and some beans on the side as an extra protein so this is the um fried rice seasoning mix i'm going to use and mine is going to look close to this. Um, I'm going to put the onions and bell peppers in there. You see they got the egg in there. And of course we're going to use the rest of those navy beans as our protein or some extra protein outside of the egg. Okay, so this is my white rice. I'm going to let everybody know I use parboiled rice. So it's partially cooked. Um, that's one of those rices you cannot really go wrong. I didn't measure anything. I just put water in the pan to cover the rice and I let it boil until all of the water was out. Um, I think it's equal parts rice, equal part rice to equal parts water or liquid of your choice. So read the directions and follow the rice as you would like. I went ahead and put my veggies into the rice to cook with it just to kind of save time and pots and pans. Um, if you're not sure, you can always microwave your vegetables uh, if they're frozen or you can cook them to the side. The corn, onions, and bell peppers or whatever your veggies choice. Cook them to the side how you like them. Uh, probably al, al dente so that they're not overdone. And then you can add them to the rice after the fact. Here's our navy beans. They are done so I'm going to put those to the side. Okay, I'm going to use this to grease my pan and I'm going to make two to three eggs so that I can have plenty of protein in my rice. Okay, so I'm scrambling my eggs. Okay, you can see I added about a tablespoon or, or so of butter to the rice, to this whole pan of rice and veggies. And here's my egg and I'm about to mix all of that in. And then I'm gonna add the fried rice season pack and we're done. All right, I got the rice. Now I'm sprinkling. Sprinkle this to taste. You don't need the whole bag, just a little bit to taste. And instead of chives, cause I can't find my chives. I had a little bit left, but I can't find them. Um, if you got fresh or dried, it's fine. I am going to do some parsley flakes. Okay, so I decided to voice over this part because I did a few fumbles. I did. I was not crazy about the stir fry seasoning, so I decided to add soy sauce to make mine taste a little better. I would suggest um, using the parboiled rice is perfect. So you don't necessarily have to fry that rice, but if I could do it over again, I would have fried my eggs harder to get them a little more crisp and firm for the rice. It is still really good the way I made it, but just to give it a more authentic fried rice taste, crisp your eggs a little more before you add them. And then maybe a little less of that seasoning or create your own season blend. And definitely utilize soy sauce for the flavor. Um, I did also put butter into my rice. I would suggest not doing that. It was fine for me because I knew I was doing it for the fat. But it also softens and you want your fried rice to be firm. And it's done. And, you know, like I said, you can substitute your rice for 
cauliflower rice. You could use um, frozen green beans and a few uh, carrots, carrot cubes, or a few shredded carrots for color and bell peppers if you were keto and onions. Okay, and those are my two fried rice dinners with uh, navy beans. And these are my five dinner meals. And I just want to say, you guys, um, I checked the scale this morning. And when I started this video uh, last night, I had to finish my meal prep uh, this morning. When I started last night, I had lost about four pounds. I was at 212 from 216. This morning, I was 211.6. So these are working. And my workout routine so far has been to grow with Joe every day and just dancing for fun. Okay, thank you for joining me for my meal prep video. And don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and please comment. Uh, let me know what you all want to see or things that I can talk about with um, just meal prepping, uh, weight gain, weight loss. If you want to know a little more about me, just whatever it is. And see you next time.